All right. Good afternoon. Happy May, everybody. And thank you for uh, attending our May sustainability chat. Uh, this is brought to you by the Sustainability Institute. We are a nonprofit based out of La Crosse, Wisconsin. My name is Casey Meehan, and I am the Director of Sustainability and Resilience at Western Technical College. Um, and I also help in that capacity, I help run a lot of the programming here at the Sustainability Institute. So we're happy to have you with it, uh, ha happy that you're with us today and uh, excited about this presentation. So um, our, our mission, first of all, if, if you're not familiar with the Sustainability Institute, our mission is to promote uh, a positive vision of what sustainable of a sustainable future could look like. Uh, here in the Driftless region, and uh, to celebrate those efforts that are already underway. We've got a lot of stuff to celebrate here in, in, in our region, a lot of great sustainability things happening. And, and we really uh, uh, feel it's an honor for us to be able to share some of those things with, with our audience. A few things about the sustainability chat. Uh, we will ask you to please keep your um, microphones on mute and your cameras off. That just, just that uh, it keeps our stream a lot stronger. If you do have questions as we move through the presentation, uh, do feel free to put them in the chat box. And Carrie and I will be monitoring that behind the scenes. And we will uh, at the end, of, <laughs> excuse me, at the end of the presentation, we will uh, um, give voice to those those questions. So if you've got anything, type them right into that chat box, and we'll be sure to get to them. So today we're talking about no mo may. Um, I in in researching this this uh, show, I um, I came across some interesting um, information about about lawns in America. And Carrie, I just put up a pre poll. I totally forgot about this. If you got a chance, um, just take a couple of seconds. We've got uh two two questions for you about um about this presentation are you participating in nomo may yes or no and have you heard of the nomo may initiative so if you could take just a couple more seconds to answer that great it looks like um about eight and ten of us have heard or are participating in nomo may fantastic um and looks like everyone's heard of it so um, fantastic. It looks like, uh, looks like this is a, a popular thing happening in the cross right now, which is fantastic. So here's what I learned about, um, about lawns. There's 40 million acres of turf grass in America. That's incredible. 40 million acres. That's 2% of the land in the continental U S is made up of turf grass of, of lawns. Um, that's more acreage than any other irrigate, irrigated crop in the U.S. Think about that for a second. Our lawns account for more acreage than any other irrigated crop in the U.S. Um, it's it, grass is it's the largest irrigated crop that we have. Um, now, it, that's a little bit problematic, right? And it's not so much that grass itself is bad. Um, it's really more about how we maintain it that's harmful for a number of reasons um, related to biodiversity, uh, water conservation and water pollution, and climate change. Um, so here to talk to us today about um, our, our lawns um, and initiative, an initiative that all of many of you know about already is uh, Aaliyah Harris. And she, Aaliyah Harris works with the outdoor, she's the outdoor recreation coordinator for the La Crosse uh, Parks Recreation Forestry Department. She studied public administration, recreational management, and environmental studies at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. And she is one of the coordinators for the um, no, no Mo May project that's happening uh, right now as we speak. So Aaliyah, I would invite you to go ahead and turn on your camera and turn on your mic and the floor is yours. So tell us about Nomo May and, um, and this project. And you know, once you're done, we'll have some time for Q&A for our, for our um, participating audience. And uh, Aaliyah, take it away. Thank you so much. Thank you for introducing me. Thank you for having me on today. Um, I'm really, really pumped that everyone so far has heard Nomo May. 
Let me just get my screen shared here. All right. So, um, yeah, I am the outdoor recreation coordinator for the Parks and Recreation Department. I work on all of the sustainable initiatives. So, No More May, Leaf It, Salt Smart. I head a couple of the other programs here um, Beautify the Cross, the Memorial Benches and Trees. Um, and then I just kind of help out in general with trail maintenance and everything like that. So, that's just a little bit about me. Now, I've been riding the No More May. So, most of you already know what it is. Like the name suggests, we as the city are encouraging residents to not mow their lots during May, as it is a very important time for um, pollinators to get established as they emerge from winter dormancy. Um, and those opportunities are severely reduced with early spring grass cutting, um, which is why we want you to not cut your grass. This provides them with food and habitats. Um, a lot of pollinators do create nests in the ground, as most of you probably know. Um, and also letting your grass grow allows for a greater root system to develop, which improves water retention and drought resiliency. So it is all not only good for the pollinators, but good for your lawn as well. And then at the end of May, when you do end up cutting your lawn, these grass clippings that um, you've just taken down will provide more nutrients to return to the soil as well. Um, and as a lot of you know, this is our second year of doing normal May. Um, last year we had about 1,400 participants. We are about 500 right now, a little bit more. Um, I just checked the other day. So not quite as many, but um, there's still the entire month to sign up. Um, and a lot of the feedback we got last year was that it took people too long to get their lots back into compliance. Last year, the grace period was two weeks. This year, we have made it one week. So lots need to be back in compliance by June 7th. Um, other concerns people had from last year um, were they, was that they were worried that people were going to use normal May as an excuse to kind of just trash their yard, use it as a big garbage can, you know, grass is tall enough, it's going to hide everything. Um, obviously, we do not want that, and that is not the goal of normal May. So if you notice your neighbors or anybody doing that, or you have concerns about that happening, um, you can give us a call um, and we will take that um, and do something with that. Um, I do not personally uh, handle that part of the, the lawn um, maintenance in the city, but I will get that directed to the people who do because that is you know, not acceptable. Um, other differences from last year to this year is that we had a booth at Earth Fair. Um, hopefully I saw some of you there. It was very successful, I'd like to say. We had a lot of people stop by, learn about the initiatives we have, uh, get some people signed up for normal May. We also have an iNaturalist page um, where people can, basically you go on there, you can share, the progress of your lawn through pictures. Um, so you can, you know, just share pictures of your lawn, um, pictures that you take of the pollinators that you see. Um, basically, we just want people to document their progress. I think it, it's going to be a really cool way to get everybody involved and, um, you know, sharing about common interests. Um, and then this is not necessarily a, a new um, development, the uh, bee study being done by Drew Lysaker and Buck Hartstock. Um, they are with a graduate program at University of Wisconsin La Crosse. They did do it last year as well, but we expanded it this year into more parks for them to study. And during registration, there is a question um, where you can actually have your lawn be a part of their study. Uh, and what they're looking for is bee diversity, 
um, to see if Nomome really is making a difference, like we hope it is and we believe it is. Uh, the studies last year did help show that a little bit, but they really needed more. So this year, they're going to be doing people's lawns as well as a couple other parks. And what they will do is take a, a net and they will sweep the area up and down, um, take pictures and document all the bees that they find. Hopefully they find a lot of different bees. Um, registration, oh, we also have stickers this year. That's another thing. Uh, we have stickers because a lot of people, um, they're happy with the art signs, but they want it for them. So we'll have stickers as well. And um, actually just today, we ran out of yard signs at City Hall, but Black River Beach Neighborhood Center does still have yard signs to pick up. And they do both still have stickers though. So. Oh, another thing I forgot. Um, this year we are doing uh, educational emails throughout the month of May. So every week there will be a new email sent out. Um, as we've done two so far, we did a welcome to normal May one. And then the one that was sent out last week was about uh, lawn alternatives that you can try instead of just regular turf grass lawn, like you mentioned earlier. Um, and these are the parts that will be participating that Drew and Bob are doing their studies in. Uh, part of Myron Park, part of Train, part of Luth, and then the entirety of Highland Park and South Library Park will be participating. So that is very exciting because last year we only had Myrick, Train, and uh, a part of Upper Hickson. So this is a we're expanding, which is great. And then some other ways to help out pollinators within the area is that you can reduce or completely eliminate your use of chemical practices such as herbicides, insecticides, and neonic, sorry, sorry excuse me. Um, and we urge you to do this because chemicals that are used in these practices can be absorbed into the plant and are in the pollen and nectar, making it toxic for um, pollinators to feed on. And this also contaminates nesting material that pollinators would use. We also urge lawn alternatives. This is what we were talking about last week in our educational email. Um, we um, are promoting native grass lawns, um, meadow lawns, which are native grass lawns that you add wildflower plantings into, and uh, pollinator gardens, also known as uh, flower and bee lawns, a lot of people like to call them. So basically just, you know, take your lawn and get rid of it and put in just a bunch of flowers, which I think at least personally looks very beautiful. Um, and if you're not all all on board with doing your entire lawn, you can also do just parts of your lawn, um, like shady areas where your turf grass doesn't really grow as well. It's really good for native grasses and meadow lawns because they a lot of the times can prosper in those shaded areas. Or, you know, even if you don't have any areas where your lawn's growing poorly, you just want to switch it, but you don't want to do the whole thing, you can just do parts of your lawn. Doesn't have to be all or nothing. We also uh, encourage everyone to educate and talk about Nomo May with others through our iNaturalist page or just by chatting with your neighbors, posting about it on social media. You know, just anything you can do to spread the word about improving sustainability within the city. It's really our goal. And bee baths. Um, a lot of people haven't heard of these, but they're basically just shallow little pools of water that you can put out with um, rocks or other natural little plants in it that allow pollinators to kind of take a break, rehydrate, and just get themselves ready. I kind of flew that through that, so sorry about that, but um, I'm available for questions.
Thank you very much, Aaliyah. Um, so I've got a question just to kick things off. Um, I'm always really interested in how people got into um, sort of what they're into, right? So how, tell us a little bit about how you got into Nomo May, right? Like what is what is your pathway into the this world of sustainability and Nomo May and, and why do you personally think that it's um, an important thing for people to do? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I've always really cared about um, the environment and our natural surroundings. Um, my, my big interest that really got me into this was um, marine life conservation. I was really, really into that. Um, and then when I went to school, kind of started learning about all the different kinds of conservation and preservation that you can, you know, that you can do. Um, and I realized that the best way to make changes was locally. Um, so I started looking into, you know, public administration and recreational management to get me on that local path and ended up working for the Parks and Rec Department. Um, and really that is what got me into like the Nomo May and all these different sustainable initiatives. I did participate in it last year before I was working for the Parks and Recreation Department. Um, I just love learning about new ways to be sustainable and to expand my system. What is the word I'm looking for? My sustainable horizon, I guess you could call it. Sure, sure. Um, so a question from, um, from Jamie. Uh, thank you for your talk. Although familiar with this program, I still have a lot to learn. Uh, due to this program or by itself, are there now lawn services that are more amenable to no mow may and non-pesticide or, or you know, um, chemical practices? Uh, when I checked two years ago, all the services, uh, all the mowing services still did spraying and stuff like that. Do you know of any, any local businesses that are moving towards the direction of no mow may that can help out? I have not, but that would be a cool thing for me to look into and maybe try to get in contact with some local services. Um, I know a lot of services um, wouldn't let, you know, like certain apartment buildings or certain people participate because they didn't want to forego mowing. Um, last year, that was a big problem. It hasn't been as big of a problem this year. So that does mean, they, you know, they're starting to get on board and accept that people want to participate in these sustainable initiatives. Um, but I really like that idea. So I'm gonna reach out to some of them and, you know, see if we can get something going. Yeah, sure. Aliyah, how do lawn alternatives um, meet the city standards for groomed lawns? Does that make sense? So like, if you have like a, um, you know, a wildflower lawn or some of those other alternatives that you were talking about, does that meet city standards? Um, in most cases, yes. That is something that needs to be, um, I think, approved with, like approved by the city, the, um, the process of getting one. Um, but once you obtain you know, that, uh, the the go ahead on that, you're, you're pretty good. Um, that kind of also falls under our brief by the cross program. So kind of, um, it it's in a weird gray area, but um, from what I've heard, it's, it meets the requirements. Um, that's another thing that it's, you know, as people are changing their ways of living and doing these other lawn alternatives, that's something you know, local municipalities and, um, you know, local laws and all that, they have to catch up still. So um, that's always something that's always changing here. Sure. Um, a question from Anna. Uh, what, excuse me, what data can we give to others who are skeptical about the effectiveness of this? Uh, people who think this, you know, it, it isn't worth giving up their manicured laws, lawns for a month. Mm -hmm. um, what type of evidence do we have that this is this is something that's worthwhile? Yeah. Um, so that uh, bee study that I was talking about earlier that um, Julie Sker and Bug Hardstock are doing, 
so this is their second year doing it, but they do have one from last year that I believe was posted through um, the universities of Wisconsin lacrosse, UWL. Um, I believe they have it posted on, um, I'm not sure where they have it posted, but um, if you look up e study lacrosse Wisconsin, it would, you know, it would pop up and they do have some documentation in there that, you know, proves, hey, we, we swept these parks, we found higher bee diversity in the ones that did no mow versus the ones that didn't. Um, and that's what we, our goal is this year as well, to create more of that information because the only other city in Wisconsin that has done this and has, um, done experiments on it was Appleton, Wisconsin. Um, but recently they had to pull down their study or I'm not sure why they had to pull it down. But so there is no study out there right now, which is what I meant by our goals that we are trying to complete this year. So two years worth of data versus just last year, we can you know more fortify that and get that out soon, hopefully. And I will be sharing that. Um, at the end of the summer, once they have all of their data put together. So hopefully we can get more out there on that. Um, and then also, you know, you can always direct them to the Parks and Recreation homepage or the Facebook page or the Instagram page, because we're always posting um, stuff on there as well. Is that where people will be able to find the results of the study at the end of the summer once they once the researchers have completed it? Yep, so I'll post it on um, all of those things and then I'll also um, send it out in an email for the people who signed up to receive emails. Sure, okay. Um, and I know, now this, isn't, this doesn't answer Anna's question directly, um, but I know one other uh, argument sort of for the NOMO may and, and just rethinking our lawns in general Pollinators, absolutely. Without pollinators, it's it's sort of end game for humans. But um, there's also uh, a big climate argument to be made, and it's not again like I was saying, not that grass is necessarily bad. Um, so grass or or any other type of plant acts as a carbon sink, so it sucks in carbon dioxide, right? Which is what we need to do if we're going to help uh, mitigate climate change. The problem with grass is is more our habits of ma maintaining it. So um, any type of carbon sink that the grass offers is actually pretty much just uh, a wash because of the, the mowers that we use and the gas uh, leaf blowers and things like that. So, um, you know, so it's, it's really, uh, and the pesticides that, and the, and the um, you know, the, the, um, the, uh, just the chemicals that we're putting on it basically mid wipes out any climate benefit from the grass. So, um, and I know that's not hard data, but there is there is that info sort of out there on that. Um, so moving on with our questions here, um, from Karen, I understand that people may be concerned that not mowing may lead to sloppy yards, um, just like the feedback that, that you got from last year, right? Um, but was this feedback actually confirmed or was it just a worry that was expressed by residents rather than a, an actual reality? Yes, um, I might have misspoke earlier. It, this was never actually like confirmed. Um, we never had anybody call with complaints that their neighbors were using their lawns basically as uh, trash cans. This is just a worry that um, has come up a lot um, as I've gone and talked about no May with the neighborhood associations at a couple of different meetings. That is a worry that came up a lot um, from the neighborhood associations. Um, so that's just something I wanted to adjust, and that was a worry of yours that you can still call and you know complain about their yard, not because it's a hype, but because they are practicing um, un unacceptable methods of yard maintenance. So it sure. hasn't happened yet. So I do have good faith in the people of La Crosse that we will not use our lawns as trash cans. Here's, here's a question. Um, so I know last year when I participated, I have just a little hand, uh, a hand, a real mower, right? Like not a, not a gas powered mower or anything like that. 
and it needs pretty short grass. Like it doesn't cut long grass very well at all, right? And so how do people get back into compliance? Um, are there any tips you have for mowing down after the grass gets, you know, grow so tall during May? How do people best mow that back into compliance? Yes, um, that is um, a concern that other people have had as well. So we recommend um, that, you know, if you have to, if you don't have a, a mower that can withstand those taller grasses, to um, if you do have the type of mower where you can set your cut, your cut height to the highest deck setting, um, and you can mow, you know, maybe once halfway through the month and then once again at the end of the month, if that is a big concern. Um, we would prefer not to, but also um, at the end of the month, uh, a lot of people have said a lot, the best way that worked for them was to actually weed whack a, a layer first, just to get some off the top, put their deck height to the height setting, and then, you know, just take a couple passes over their lawn. Just sure. A different, yeah. Sure. Um, how about uh, um, let's see a question here about oh any suggestions about where people might be able to again looking at that um, alternative to to yards um, and traditional turf grass any suggestions on where people might be able to get native grasses or pollinator plants or anything like that? Somebody asked in the, in the chat if um, people can purchase those at Western. Um, and the answer, the short answer to that is no, not that I'm aware of. Um, our greenhouses do, uh, we do have a plant sale. There are some, sometimes there are native grasses in, the, in that plant sale, it already happened. It was, it's usually the end of April. Um, but no, we don't regularly sell anything like that. Um, Aliyah, do you know where people can get their hands on, on some of these native plants? Yeah, um, I, I had a bunch of them in mind, but they've all just gone. Um, but there are quite a few um, nurseries in La Crosse and the surrounding area. One that I personally use a lot is Prairie Moon Nursery, just in Winona. Um, but we also do have other plant nurseries in La Crosse that carry tons of native options, um, including grasses, native wildflowers, um, popular native or uh, like um, pollinating plants, um, specifically early spring blooming ones. That's the best for pollinators is, and that's kind of what we're promoting a lot with Nomo May is, you know, getting that early spring blooming plants, like, you know, well, the ones that just growing a lot, like dandelions, white clover, violets, stuff like that. But there's also a lot of spring blooming plants that you can get as well through most of these. Sure. And, and any rumblings at all of this project, Nomo May, expanding beyond La Crosse into Alaska or Holman or Shelby or any of the other surrounding communities? Um, I hope so. I have been chatting a little bit with the Onalaska Parks and Rec Department, but um, you know, it's kind of something that they have to decide they want to take on. So hopefully after they see the cross having success with it, it will encourage these other communities to start. Um, there are other cities in Wisconsin, not around here, but um, that are participating as well. I uh, saw so Appleton is, somewhere around Madison. I don't remember what the city was called. There's a couple other, it's, it's getting, it's getting popularity in Wisconsin. So hopefully it just keeps going. Sure. And do you, will you be posting, um, is it, you mentioned how you have email sources going out to people who have registered. Um, every week there's, there's some more um, educational information that you, you're emailing out. Um, is there a reference to that or a link to that that um, is, is like that people can get to if they haven't registered, especially I'm, I'm thinking for um, people not participating or surrounding businesses um, that might still, it might be good if they have access to that information, even if, even if they're not registered, is there a place where they could find that? Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm taking that information and kind of um, shrinking it down basically for Facebook and Instagram posts. Those are the, um, 
social medias that Parks and Rec Department uses. Um, so they just, they don't go as in depth as the emails would. Uh, they don't give as many you know, suggestions as the emails would, but uh, they are accessible through those um, social medias and they will have all the same links that I put in the emails as well. So. Thinking, thinking back to, um, to last year, what, um, I guess, how did the program go? You gave an overview of the program, but just from your kind of looking back at it, what were the successes and what were some of the lessons learned from, from last year's No Mo May? Successes? Um, well, I, I think the whole program in itself was very successful. It is something that had never been done before and it had a lot of participants. Um, you know, people, people loved it. A lot of people were saying that they saw pollinators in their, their yard. Um, last year was uh, kind of difficult because the weather was, I don't know if you guys remember last year, but uh, the weather was crazy <laughs> during the spring last year. So, um, you know, everything started blooming a little bit, I believe, later than it was anticipated. Um, so it was a little hard to get accurate, you know, data from that, but uh, a lot of businesses participated as well as residents did. And we got, you know, good feedback that we needed to better the program for this year, such as, you know, the grace period being too long. Um, some people weren't necessarily happy with the, the yard signs. So we didn't get any new ones this year. You know, we just had the ones from last year. So that's why the availability was limited. People didn't like that. We, you know, we're ordering these. They, I mean, they are chloroplast, which is recyclable. And the goal was that you would hang on to your yard sign. But, you know, I, I do see where they're coming from as well. Sure. Um, and Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, uh, um, what would, in, in, in your head, what would success be this year? What would a successful NOMO May, you know, uh, at the end of May this year, what, what what, what would have to happen for you to say, yes, this was really successful? That's a good question. I guess I haven't really given them much thought. I've just been go, 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 and I haven't yeah. stopped to think about. I think, I mean, I already kind of do consider it success. I feel like 500 people so far being signed up is already a really good success rate. Um, I guess I would consider it successful when I go through and I read the feedback from this year, because uh, a lot of people will, will say, you know, oh, I got this grow in my yard, or I saw this, I saw this. So I think it'd be successful if even just a few people were like, I loved this, I thought it was amazing. Um, that's it. Great. Yeah, yeah. great. I and just in uh, thinking beyond May, you also help coordinate the Leaf It program, mm -hmm. correct? Is that what that's called? Leaf, Leaf It? Leaf It? Is it? Yeah, Leaf It. Could you could you tell tell our audience just a little bit about that program? Yeah. So um, Leaf It basically the goal is to reduce carbon emissions from leaf pickup trucks, um, reduce the amount of leaves and biodegradable waste that is going into our water systems. There's a lot of phosphorus runoff from leaves that goes into the gutters and that goes into the marshes, goes into the Mississippi. Um, and it also helps your grass become greener and come back faster in the springtime. So basically what we want you to do is mulch your leaves. You know, to take them over, mulch them over, mulch them up into bits and pieces. You can take that mulch and you can evenly distribute it through your yard or um, in your plant beds or even in your indoor plants. So we really just want to reduce carbon emission from the trucks, reduce the amount of leaves going into the, the water systems, and help you have a greener, healthier lawn. Great. And and uh, should people be interested in in participating in that program, is it the same 
type of sign up as it is with Nomo May, where you go, like, do you, are you supposed to go online and register, or is it more of a um, just sort of an honor system? You just sort of do it. Uh, both. Um, registration is required for Nomo May because there is an ordinance that we are breaking. Um, there is no ordinance being broken if you participate and leave it, but we still do um, registration if you want to provide feedback or, you know, it just kind of helps us keep track of people, like who's participating if a lot of people are participating. Um, so you don't have to, but it's more of a if you want to kind of thing. Got it. And Ali, I'm going to give you the last word here on uh, what is uh, something inspirational that you can that you can leave us with um, on no mo may. Why should we Why should we do this? What's the most inspirational argument you can come up with? Yeah. Pollinators are incredibly, incredibly important. We need them to, as you said earlier, we need them to survive basically as a population. Um, and, oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> you know, pollinators are just super important and, um, and inspirational is not really my, my forte. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> You're doing great. I, um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you are doing great and, and I did not mean to put you on the spot there. Oh, your, okay. work, your work and what you're doing is inspirational. What you're, you know, the way that you're helping. Um, I, I think what's what's so cool about the NOMO May program is that it's it's giving people um, an opportunity to to act individually, um, which I know that that um, people are always looking for ways to act individually when it comes to climate change and sustainability, right? gives people a way to act individually, but we're doing it in a way that is collectively changing policies. Um, and that's really, we, we need both of those things to happen if we wanna really you know, uh, turn the ship around here. So we need individual action, but we also need systemic change. And I think all of us acting individually in this way of, of um, you know, letting, the, letting our grass grow for a bit in May, um, it's leading to some institutional systemic change, um, which is really beneficial for all of us. So the work that you're doing, Aaliyah, is really important to the city um, and, and climate and sustainability. And of course, the pollinators who we share this world with, right? So um, thank, you. So thank, thank you. you so much, so much for what you're doing. Um, it really is important work and um, we're, we're a much better community because of it. Thank you. So, Everybody just pretend that I said that, that oh, was my no. inspirational quote. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you so much. And, and uh, everyone, thank you for joining our sustainability chat this May. Um, we are uh, we're a, a lean organization um, here at the Sustainability Institute. So um, if, uh, if what you saw today um, is something that you like, if you enjoy this programming, um, just know that all this programming comes, uh, comes at you for free because of our generous members. Um, so if you are interested in becoming a member of the Sustainability Institute, I would highly encourage you to do so. You can go to our webpage, sustaininstitute.com, and you'll see uh, two buttons in the upper right corner. There is a become a member button and a donate button. It's really easy. Just choose a level that you're comfortable with. Um, and any donation, any membership helps us uh, continue bringing this, progr this programming to you for free. I want to give special thanks, uh, of course, to Aaliyah Harris for sharing her, her knowledge with us today and for her work, but also to our promoter, champion, and advocate members, Wade Hackbarth, Glenn Jenkins, Jacob Siamas, Rose Roshnik. Dorothy Leonard, Strive to Thrive, Habitat for Humanity, and a special thank you to Lynn and Todd Huffman and Lee Rosh. Uh, you'll see a poll on your screen right now. Um, if you could take a few seconds to answer that, that gives uh, Carrie Thompson and I some feedback about, um, about how to proceed and, and uh, the strengths of, of our programming. So 
please do, if you, if you can, uh, spare a couple of seconds and just answer that, uh, those two questions that you see. And finally, uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining us. Um, our next sustainability chat will be on June 21st at 2 p.m. Uh, and that's going to be with uh, folks from Friends of the Blufflands, uh, talking a little bit about um, the Blufflands here in, in the Driftless region, why they're important to us, why, how we can help conserve them um, for all of our, all of our benefit. So again, that's happening June 21st at 2 p.m. Uh, also, one other quick announcement. Uh, if you were involved at all in the Green Goose Chase that we just finished up uh, about a week ago or so, um, or even if you weren't, we have a new post out on our website at sustaininstitute.com that highlights that, uh, the Green Goose Chase. It was a fantastic event. Thank you to anyone uh, in this call who is, who is participating. Check out that website um, or check out that blog post. See what fun we had and, uh, and consider joining us next year for the Green Goose Chase. So until next time, thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your spring and we'll see you, uh, we'll see you this summer.